Welcome to Cooking with Sal and Pat, July issue. It's Sal's favorite month. It's also Sal's birthday month, so we're big eaters in the month of July around my house. Today we have three beautiful uh, choices for your uh, barbecue recipes. We have Pat's uh, bacon wrapped stuffed chicken breast on the grill, which is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. We have strawberry bacon salad with a homemade vinaigrette dressing. And uh, the showpiece for the dinner is Chocolate Fantasy, five ingredients, and you do not want to miss any part of this. If you could just put your little mouth up to the TV, I'd be, put you, give you a bite of this right away. Uh, if you like what you're seeing today, please like this, click on the link below for the recipes, and subscribe. I just want that. Well, you can have just that. Okay. You're a grown-up. You can eat whatever you want to eat. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. It does have Kahlua in it, so don't eat it for breakfast. So for this July episode, we're doing Pat's Bacon Wrapped Stuffed Chicken. It's a perfect barbecue uh, entree, whether it's July or September or whenever you want a barbecue in Wyoming, it's perfect. So Pat, take take it away and show us how to make this delicious dish. Alrighty. So uh, basically we're doing a regular everyday chicken breast. We're going to slice it open. We're going to stuff it with all the ingredients we have here, which is spicy sausage, spinach, which makes it healthy, uh, Swiss cheese, spaghetti sauce, and some uh, Italian seasonings. So let's get started. I'll just stick my knife into it and then kind of roll it around so I'm just having one small hole. And I like to have it upside down so this part's facing up. Um, the reason for the one small hole is when you're melting the cheese or whatever, there's only one place for it to escape. So I'll cut it and then I kind of put my finger in there and just make sure it's all open. So it's wide open inside there. Do the same thing again. I get the meaty side of the breast. So this is the small side, this is the meaty side. Flip it upside down. And the reason it's upside down is because you can come through that area there. So one small hole, roll your blade around, and then go the opposite direction. So the first thing I always put in there is the meat because it's the hardest to get into the hole. And there's no set amounts, just kind of whatever you feel like you want to put in there until it's kind of full. Just a little bit more. And this is just treats, so and obviously if you didn't like that much spice, you Correct. can use another pork sausage. Correct. Spice seasons pork sausage. Um, I don't know who wouldn't like treats, though, but some don't. Correct. Then just, the hole has to be big enough to fit the cheese in there. You Swiss, right? And then I forgot my spoon. Could you grab a spoon from sure. this cabin right here? Sure. This? Yep. Perfect. And once again, if you don't like getting your hands messy, my meals is normally your hands deep into all of it. So, just regular spaghetti sauce. Regular out spaghetti of the jar. sauce. And once you, oops, just kind of push it around, made the hole bigger than I wanted it. So, but then set that one aside. You're done. Oh, gotta put the healthy stuff in there. Finish. And once again, there's no, no right or wrong way. You're just stuffing. Stuff in the breast the full of stuff. The goes on the outside? Yes. Okay. And about how long will these cook on the grill? I know um, it's de hard to tell, depending on the, the thickness of the, the breast, but I try to do about five to ten minutes per side um, is normal. And, you know, once we do the bacon, uh, depending which way, I'm going to show you both ways of doing the bacon, the regular way of uh, just doing the spiral wrap around, um, which is the easiest way. It's the way I mostly do it at my house because it's more evenly cooked. Or we could do the basket weave, um, which I'll show you how to do a basket weave really easily. Alrighty, so when we're doing this, for the this would be the basket weave. So it doesn't matter how many wide you go. Pull it off first, and I always like to stretch it out a little bit longer. Oh, I forgot to put the seasoning. Throw a little bit of seasoning down here. Oh, no, I was wondering about the seasoning. Okay. Main thing for the seasoning, what it's doing, it's, it's also helping us not stick to the, um, the bacon's not going to stick to the tinfoil as easy. Just a little bit of olive oil from Mary. All right, so we'll just lay these across here. Just 
We'll flip two opposite ones. Lay down a half. And then flip those back over. Then flip these over. And repeat. And then we just grab our chicken. I place it just normal like that. This facing up. And then just wrap this around. And wrap this side around. And this is the side where we're going to want to put down first. Because to since, adhere it. To adhere it. So since we have it that way, from the top of it looks like so. Great. Now the other way to do it is the way I prefer a little bit better. Just because, I mean, I love bacon, but it gets a little, bacon, a little thick bacon on there. So this should take about three strips, maybe four. Hold it. The first wrap's the hardest one because it's really slimy. So another way of doing it, you can put some of the Italian seasoning on if you want. After you get it started. Oh my goodness, I'm burning up the house. And this looks really cool once, if you keep your stuff real tight, it looks cool once it's cooked. It's a little show-off thing. It's delicious. And notice how I'm overlapping where I stopped. I start there again, like so. Fabulous. Let's get those babies on the grill. Let's get them cooking. The perfect accompaniment to Pat's fantastic stuff, bacon stuff wrapped chicken. Tongue twister. Yes, bacon stuff wrapped chicken, which is on the grill as we speak, is strawberry bacon salad. We're continuing our theme of bacon in nearly every recipe, I believe, and there's nothing wrong with that. So this is a great, this is a wonderful romaine lettuce based salad, and of course you can substitute in spinach if you'd like, or you could go half and half. But the dressing literally is four ingredients: homemade vinaigrette. There's nothing like it. Um, this is plenty to, to dress. You might think that this is a small amount of dressing, but the salad serves four, and this is plenty dressing to uh, dress that beautiful salad. So we're going to start with a quarter cup olive oil from Mary Walsh from downtown Casper. Great little store too. Of course, it's a wonderful store. It's like it's like going to a liquor store with but but olive oil and balsamic vinegar are your choices. And all it's the fantastic. tools they have in the back for all the kitchen stuff. Yep. And Spend she lets you there. drink. She lets you drink it before you decide what kind you want, which is fantastic. So in the in the mix it mixing bowl there, we have a quarter cup olive oil, two tablespoons of balsamic, also from Mary Walsh. You can get any flavor you would like. This is just kind of your Regular grade, regular balsamic, which I adore. It's so sweet. It's like eating dessert on your salad. Whoops, there you go. Speaking of sweet, two tablespoons of honey. Normally I just spin my finger in there and I get the pretty sweet. <laughs> right. Sure you do, Pat. Two tablespoons of honey, and now I'm going to make as big a mess as you did doing the chicken. And Mr. Honey Bear takes his sweet time. Two tablespoons of honey and... Dijon mustard gives it a little kick. And this is really a spectacular dressing. Of course, you can use it on other things other than romaine or, or spinach. It would be great on chicken, actually. Not that I want to mess up your compete with your You're recipe, still dripping but, honey oh, I everywhere. See that. I know that. And so far, and it's then, not in the cup. And then you're going to clean it up. Yeah, I'll take care of that. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to read, and I'm not doing a very good job. One teaspoon. Whoa, there we go. Kind of messy. One teaspoon Dijon mustard. And then this recipe, literally, I'm trying to put those in there. You're so doing I'm a not, good job. No, see now. Got to lick the honey. Just whisk that baby around. Get the emulsion going on. The what going on? Emulsion. Emulsion. You have a lot of big words. I'm sorry. I like words. English and spelling are what I do. I wanted to be a professional speller, but I didn't know anyone who needed one of those. So I went into sports writing instead because that's the only other thing I could do. All right. And cooking. But at the time, I didn't really know about going to school to cook because the only person who taught me how to cook was my mama. Trying to not to make a huge mess and, of course, not succeeding. But there is our dressing, our four-ingredient dressing. 
for the strawberry bacon salad, simply olive oil, balsamic vinegar, honey, and Dijon mustard. Does that go in the fridge at all or just keep it uh, out? I would just make it right before you make the salad and don't keep it out because it may thicken on you. If it does, you just shake it up a shake little bit. Up. But, yep, okay. that's ready to go. And we'll be back in a moment to show you how to do the salad. And if this doesn't say summer, I don't know what does. It's just the perfect accompaniment. Fresh salad goes with any grilled thing you want to make. It has bacon in it, which, of course, to me means it's a main dish all, all on, on its own. It's just simply, and look at this. I did not buy bagged salad, which I always buy for us at home. And this is just a one beautiful head of romaine. Um, it says eight cups, and surprisingly, one, one gorgeous head of romaine at the grocery store is exactly eight cups. And yes, I did measure because I'm weird that way. Okay, now here's the beauty of the recipe. So there's eight cups of chopped romaine. Then we have one pound of beautiful fresh sliced strawberries. These are just absolutely gorgeous. You need to set the strawberries out for any time before you put them in there, or does that uh, matter? I like to a little bit, right. I think that they're, they they definitely get more flavorful if they're more at room temperature than icy cold. Yep. Um, and these were just enormous berries. I actually quartered most of them, and they're just huge, 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 huge. Okay, we have two-thirds cup crumbled blue cheese. Of course, you can use feta if you prefer, but we like blue at our home. Five or six strips crumbled crispy bacon. Might as well do seven. Uh, that's a lot. That's actually more than six, I think. And then two-thirds cups pecans. I don't like pecans. I'm sorry. Well, then don't use them. Do you like any kind of nuts in your salad or no? I don't like Are nuts in not, my salad, no. You're not a nutty person? No. Okay. Then we're just going to give this a big toss. You use your hands, I use my hands. Everything's all tossed together. This is a great salad. It does look good. We tested this. And hopefully at, all at the home. nuts fall to the bottom. Well, <laughs> you could, you know, be like salad and pick it pick, pick them out and pretend it's cilantro. Uh, and then Oh, so you put that on all at once. All at once, oh. because you're gonna serve it. And oh. that way the little goes a long way. And yep. exactly. And the ranch man will just have to deal. Make it the way the people you're feeding want it. That there does look you great go. Though. Voila. All righty. So it's starting to crispen up from the other side. Notice how the spiral is starting to look really cool. See how the basket weave looks on the other side. See what I mean, though? There's just a lot of bacon there, so... Sometimes you won't be eating that bacon because it's just not 100% cooked. But the spirals turn out pretty darn good. This must be the cold side of the barbecue. So let's kind of move stuff over. There we go. So the perfect summer dessert for a barbecue or a celebration, but it's not what I would call your everyday two Oreos and a glass of milk dessert because you would weigh 900 pounds if you ate this every day. This is called chocolate fantasy. Actually, it's one of very few recipes that I actually invented myself. Okay. I'm pretty much a recipe cook because I learned from my mom and she was pretty much a recipe cook. This, honestly, I just made up in my head and it's fantastic. It looks good you already. You may be familiar with uh, English trifles, which are traditionally pound cake, jam, and fruit and cream okay. layered in a beautiful bowl. These bowls um, are not very expensive, and I would encourage anyone who ever entertains for any reason to buy one of these bowls because presentation is everything with 100%. this dessert. This is five ingredients. It's fantastic for barbecues. If you're in a club, wine club, book club, Bible club. What if I'm going to just go clubbing? If you want to go clubbing, at golf club, whatever club you're in, they will be wowed by this dessert. Chocolate fantasy, here we go, five ingredients. Brownies, your your regulation generic boxed brownie mix. My mom's brownies. Made exactly like the, the recipe dictates with three quarters of a cup pecans added. If you don't like pecans, don't put them in. You if could you'd put rather peanuts have, in there. You could, or you could put no, no nuts, but that's what the recipe yes. says. Then the magic of this is when these brownies come out of the oven baked, you're going to take your magic bottle of Kahlua. Make uh -huh. sure you have enough, because there's never enough in my magic bottle of Kahlua. Is that why we don't have any here, because you drank it all? <laughs> I didn't trust you, boys. So three quarters, three quarters of a cup of Kahlua goes poured over the hot brownies. Okay. And like magic, 
it absorbs, as you can see. Just like my liver. Thus, like this, is a pudding cake. And purists might say, forget the rest of that stuff, I'll just eat this. But that's not what I want to show with my recipe. So this is brownies with Kahlua added over the top when they're hot from the oven. So we're going to layer one layer of brownie. And this is not going to cut into pretty squares because it has the Kahlua in it. So it's very, very uh, much more like pudding cake, the consistency of pudding cake. We're just going to layer that all around the bottom. This is two large packages. They Jello pudding comes in large and small packages, as you know. This is two large packages of chocolate instant. And if you read the package directions for two large packages, you would use six cups of whole milk. We are using four and a half cups to make it even thicker and I'm more rich. I'm guessing you pre-measured it knowing you, right? I did. Yes. And then put it back in the container. Put it back in the container. So four and a half cups of milk, just like that, and whole milk, because, you know, this is not a diet recipe, so we're not using diet. Well, are we putting any bacon in it, though? No, this is the, we should. this dessert does not include bacon. Half the pudding goes right over that brownie layer of deliciousness. And if it's, if it's been a while since you've made jello pudding, which every mama in the world, I think, has made jello pudding, it does set up really, really quickly, so this is already... Even not for the magic of TV, it's the way you want it. These are chopped in half Rolos, which are delicious caramel-filled chocolate what, little the nuggets. Right. There are a few missing. Uh, of course, you can use peanut butter cups for this, and I have used peanut butter cups in this recipe. But since I just used six dozen, six dozen peanut butter cups, making six dozen graduation hats for... Graduation gifts. I'd be a little, 72 total. I'm a little peanut butter cup. It took me almost four hours to do six of them. But the kids were very appreciative, and their moms were super appreciative. When you're layering these Rolos, you're going to want to leave a few for the cute garnish on the top so it looks oh, really Oh, I thought you were going to say for me. Well, you've already had your few. So the Rolos go next, followed by the Cool Whip. Or if you want, you can put that in a glass jar and act like you did it yourself, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, look at this. It's especially airy today. So there's half of your Cool Whip. And then we're going to repeat the layers. Last mm. one. There you go. Almost put your damn finger off. I did. You did. I did, you did. All right, there you have Chocolate Fantasy, five ingredients, and it is fantastic. All righty, I think we're about done with a few of them. Let's check them. These two look like they need just a little bit more time. But these three look like they're basically done. So it's not a big deal that part of the spiral came off. And the basket weave never, when you put it on the grill, it doesn't always look like a basket weave when you're done. But when you do a full turkey and it doesn't touch the grill, it always looks cool.